So hello gamers, today I'm going to be showing you the best barrel attachments in Phantom Forces. Let's go for a thousand likes, but let's just jump into it, man. No real intro, let's just go. Keep in mind, this is going to be the objective best barrel attachments in the game, you know? So suppressors are basically out of the game. Suppressors, as you know from my suppressor ranking video, are pretty much never good, but I will be talking about the okay option. First three barrel attachments are not very good. However, Flash Hider is actually pretty nice now, because basically guns have muzzle flash unless they're suppressed, and suppressors have a lot of downsides. However, if you want no muzzle flash on your gun, so a little bit like... As you can see, like, the flash isn't happening. There's no flash from your gun. That's actually kind of helpful. You used to be able to turn off the flash just in the settings, but now you can't. And that could mess up your aim, so that's pretty nice. But it's definitely not the best, objectively speaking, because it's basically just, like, one tiny upside and all downsides. The first good barrel attachment is the compensator. Now, the compensator, as you guys know, it does reduce horizontal recoil, but increases vertical recoil. Now, you're probably like, that's a bad thing. You don't want to have your gun go up, because that's annoying. But actually, the compensator is better than muzzle brake, because in this game, if you couldn't tell, like, when your gun goes back and forth, you can't control that at all. It just goes back and forth. But you can just pull down so you can make the uh, recoil overall a lot better. And actually, just if you can control it, compensator is nearly every time better. The only time that compensator is worse than muzzle brake is, I guess I'll talk about that when I talk about the muzzle brake. But basically, if you have an automatic gun, chances are that it's better to use compensator unless it's like the DBV 30 on 6, where it's just so incredibly slow shooting that it just kind of goes down before its next shot, you know? If a gun doesn't move at all, then muzzle brake is better. But if you want the gun to actually just like be more accurate, if you just pull down a little bit and compensator is just objectively speaking better because you can control the vertical but you can't really control the horizontal the horizontal is just kind of does whatever it wants man so that's why i'd say compensator is probably the best barrel attachment in the entire game it's even kind of helpful for hit firing because like makes the recoil lower and yeah it's really good now keep in mind this does actually increase the sway on scope basically when you have a shifted steady scope you know how it goes like wheel wheel basically makes that happen more often like it just sways back and forth farther and since compensator is not going to be a big effect on literally any sniper in the entire game because keep in mind sniper rifles shoot so slow that recoil reduction attachments are basically negligible on them most of the time you don't really want to be using the compensator so do not use the compensator on a sniper rifle but basically any single gun that's full auto is going to be pretty good with a comp, but then you have muzzle brake. Now, muzzle brake, this does the same thing that comp does, but backwards. It increases sway on scopes, but instead of increasing vertical sway on scopes, it increases horizontal sway, and it lowers vertical recoil, but makes your horizontal recoil worse. So basically, what you're going to be able to tell is that I pull down, but I can't pull left and right. So you're going to have this instead of like more basically just like up and down, but left side to side, which is uh, not very nice because like players, I've already said this so many times, they're tall, they're not wide. So having vertical recoil is not bad because like if you're aiming at the body, you might hit the head because of that. But horizontal recoil, you're probably just not going to hit the person, especially at range. But this can be kind of nice to have a muzzle break in CQC because if you just want the gun to like hit a player, uh, but not be very accurate at range, then muzzle break is not too bad. I just would say compensator is better, especially if you can control slightly the recoil, you know, it's not going to be like that annoying to control, but there are a couple of guns that are incredibly low recoil. For example, something like L86 LSW with 223, and I'm running muzzle brake and stubby grip because this has no recoil at all. You're just gonna notice, it's just gonna hit every single shot. So muzzle brake is better on guns that already have no recoil. The gun doesn't move, now it just like doesn't go up as much, you know? It's gonna have this recoil. As you can see, it's like it's gonna hit like every single shot at range easily in CQC as well. It's really nice to have muzzle brake, but I would just recommend that you use compensator over it in most cases. And if you're kind of confused, like, well, maybe my gun is better with muzzle brake than comp, unless it's a semi auto gun, it's probably not gonna be recommended to use muzzle brake unless you're completely sure. So, I do have best setup videos on basically any gun up to rank 30. So, if you guys are like, oh, I have a gun under rank 30 and I don't know the best setup, I have videos on all of those guns, which is really cool. But muzzle brake is very good on basically any semi auto gun because semi auto guns, as you know, like they go up and then they come back down, right? That's how semi-auto works. It doesn't really go side to side at all, and uh, that's why DMRs are always better with muzzle brake. DSS would be better with comp, but of course you can't really put uh, barrel attachments on that. So yeah, every DMR that can take a barrel, you're going to be wanting to use muzzle brake, or maybe if it has a long barrel, a long barrel instead. But of the recoil reduction ones, muzzle brake is going to be better on any semi-auto gun in the entire game. Like, name a semi-auto gun that compensator is better on. I don't think you can. So in conclusion, if it's automatic, unless it's incredibly low recoil, you're going to be wanting to use compensator. And if it's semi-auto, you're going to be wanting to use muzzle brake. And also, if recoil doesn't matter, like for example, the intervention, you're not going to be wanting to use a muzzle brake because who really cares about the recoil when the gun does this? Like, it's going to shoot in the same spot, you know? Our next pretty good barrel attachment is called the short barrel. I wouldn't say it's insanely good, but it is actually pretty nice on some guns. Actually, pretty much any gun, if you don't care about a lot of stats that you will be losing. The short barrel, for some reason, makes your hip fire worse. Basically, the main thing it does is it increases both walk speed and handling, and I think draw time as well. So basically, you aim faster and you walk faster. It also increases your maximum damage range, which could slightly increase your three hit kill range, but only like five studs usually. So not actually a big upside at all, usually. So I wouldn't really recommend 
recommend it for that reason. However, here are the downsides. First off, it does increase camera recoil slightly, which shouldn't be a big problem because it's only in hip fire. However, it does have the very annoying downside of terrible, terrible velocity, worse minimum damage range, so basically worse damage at range, and higher recoil because you won't be able to run a compensator instead. Because if you run a short barrel, you can't also run a comp, which you should be able to run like a barrel and a muzzle at the same time, in my opinion, because you can run a short barrel and then put a compensator on the shorter barrel, but it's not really built into this game's attachment system, which is kind of annoying. So overall, kind of worse recoil, worse velocity by quite a bit. Like, I think like 25% or something. Your bullets move slower and your gun drops damage a lot faster at range. But it's still not bad. Like, if you do want to walk faster and aim faster and stuff, it could be helpful on certain guns like maybe Scar H or something that just have kind of annoying handling and stuff, you know? And you have muffler. Now, muffler, this makes your gun a lot quieter, makes your recoil better, and doesn't have any negative effects that are very big. Because as you know, most suppressors make your velocity worse and your damage worse. And this doesn't do that. However, it does make your gun shoot slower, which will be kind of annoying. It can't be nice if you're kind of like a guy who just sprays all of his magazines, for example, like maybe it's okay on the Vector, maybe it's okay on the M231, maybe it's okay on like the MAC-10 or something, but like for me, I'm gonna prefer to have better horizontal recoil because muffler doesn't have a massive effect on recoil. It does lower it by like maybe 15%. It does make the gun shoot slower so you can shoot for longer overall because you're not firing as many bullets per second. And this does make it very nice. And also the main thing it's good on is bolt actions and maybe shotguns because if a gun is a pump action, a bolt action, or basically anything that isn't semi-auto or full auto, right? Like for example, the intervention, you gotta bolt the gun, right? And it wouldn't make any sense that it would make your bolt the gun slower because you had a barrel on the gun, you know? It wouldn't make any sense, right? So what they did was muffler doesn't actually have an effect on those guns. It just makes the gun quieter and the recoil lower, but doesn't make the gun shoot slower. So basically the only downside has been removed. So if you want basically a quieter gun with no other downsides, it's very, very good to use muffler on like basically K14 intervention, any sniper rifle that isn't semi-auto. For example, the TRG, you're going to be wanting to use the long barrel instead because you want a better torso kill range. But intervention, for example, doesn't have a long barrel and it also isn't semi-automatic. So you're going to be wanting to use the muffler on that. If that makes sense. Next up though, you have long barrel, which is basically the opposite of short barrel. All the upsides on the short barrel became downsides and all the downsides became upsides. So basically, your gun has a worse max damage range, which can be annoying. However, a lot better min damage range. For example, Scar L has a 120 stud minimum damage range, right? If you put long barrel, it's a 180 stud minimum damage range, which means the gun is going to drop less. It also has higher velocity, but worse handling and movement. So basically, your bullets fly faster and your gun drops damage slower at range, which is really, really nice. This makes the long barrel very, very good, especially on sniper rifles, because it actually increases all your damage ranges on snipers and makes your gun one shot kill farther to the body, which is really, really nice, right? And it's the same downside as a short barrel where you can't really be running a compensator and a long barrel, so your recoil isn't going to be quite as good as just running a comp. But as you can see, it's kind of going to beat out the uh, short barrel in a lot of scenarios. And the long barrel is basically a buff attachment. Let's be real. It just makes every gun that it's on better, except maybe like KS23M after the nerf. The shotguns are getting a nerf and long barrels on shotguns are not quite as good. But on basically every other gun, it is so good. So yeah, long barrel and compensator are the two best, in my opinion, barrel attachments, hands down. We also have the oil filter. Now the oil filter is kind of similar to the muffler, however, way more downsides. Basically what this does is it makes your damage ranges worse, your muzzle velocity worse, and your RPM 15% lower. But it makes your gun very, very quiet. This is nice. It does also lower recoil and it does make your gun less mag dumpy, but muffler is kind of the same thing, but less downside. So I would recommend muffler over this, but this is not a bad option either. Then you have muzzle booster. Now muzzle booster, this increases recoil by quite a bit, but makes your RPM higher. It does make the gun shoot faster. So if you have like a gun that shoots a little bit too slow, maybe it's super low recoil and you just want it to shoot a little bit faster. Like for example, Scar L is actually really good with it. Now you have a gun that fires faster and doesn't have any like damage downgrades or anything, just it has more recoil, which is pretty nice. That doesn't really have any like, oh no, your like damage is worse or anything. Like damage doesn't change. You're gonna hit the same like like as hard. However, you're not gonna like have the best recoil anymore, which is gonna be annoying on some guns. But honestly, muzzle booster is very good on a lot of guns. Personally, I only use it on the M3A1, but you can use it on plenty of other guns. So yeah, compensator is probably gonna be the best. Then we have a couple proprietary barrel attachments, something like carbine barrel on the Mac 10. Now carbine barrel, basically it's a long barrel with a lot more upsides and downsides. If you have something that's basically a long barrel, look into the stack a little bit probably going to be worth using but the main barrel i wanted to talk about is the bars barrel i have talked about the bars barrel quite a bit recently i did do a full video talking about every bars barrel so if you guys want to see that very interesting basically it lowers damage and makes your recoil only horizontal but makes the gun shoot a lot faster because default these ak's that have bars barrels don't really shoot that fast however 
makes them shoot pretty fast. So yeah, full video on that. Bars barrel is very cool. It's on three different guns. It does kind of different things on every single gun. So if you guys want to see that, go check out that video. Maybe link in the top right, but if it's not, it's just called ranking every bars barrel in Phantom Forces. Long barrel on sniper rifles sometimes increases both max and min damage range, which is really nice. But keep in mind that it can have some massive downgrades to things like handling and stuff. But literally every single sniper rifle, I'm talking every single sniper rifle that has a long barrel, Remington, Dragon of SVU, BFG, ERG, FT300, Steyr Scout. That is literally every single sniper rifle that has a long barrel and I have a long barrel on every single one of them because there is no real downside to using it. If you just want the gun to like one shot kill farther, there's really no reason to not be using it, you know? But yeah, anyways gamers, that's gonna do it for ranking every single barrel attachment in Phantom Forces. Hopefully I'm gonna post all three of these ranking every grip ranking every barrel and ranking every site or whatever. Well, not really ranking everyone, but like the best of all of those videos. Hopefully I'm going to be posting them all three days in a row. We will see if I like have other ideas, need to post other videos before then. But yeah, that is the um, ranking of the attachments. If you guys want to see something else, like maybe ranking every other attachment or the best other attachments in Phantom Forces, let me know in the comments. Let me know your video ideas. But yeah, that's the end of this mini series, I think. Like maybe I'll make one on the other attachments or maybe like ammo types or something. I don't know. But yeah, anyways, gamers, that's going to do it for the video, but I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.